How to get maximum CPP. The Canada Pension Plan, or CPP, has three features that make it particularly valuable as a source of retirement income. Your money from CPP is guaranteed, it lasts until you die, and CPP provides inflation protection. We are going to show you what it takes to get the maximum amount of a retirement pension from CPP. There's a few things you'll need to know first. In this video, we're only describing the basic CPP, or the original program. Currently, extra rules are being phased in as part of what's called the additional CPP. For the additional CPP, the numbers change and do different things, but the general idea is the same. Most people who work in Canada are required to contribute a portion of their earnings toward their own CPP retirement pension. You are funding your own retirement pension when you contribute a portion of your earnings into CPP. How much you'll receive from CPP depends on how much you contribute and the number of years you contribute over your working life. Your working life for CPP purposes begins when you turn 18 and it ends in the year you start receiving your CPP pension. You can start taking CPP any month between when you turn age 60 to when you turn age 70. To see how to get the maximum retirement pension from the Canada Pension Plan, we're going to use the example of someone who starts taking CPP when they turn age 65. Imagine a jug of water and an ice cube tray. The water in the jug represents all your earnings for one particular year. The ice cube tray represents your personal CPP record. Pouring water from the jug into one of the compartments of the ice cube tray represents your contribution to CPP for that year. The portion you have to pour out of the jug is 5.95% of your earnings, but only until the compartment in the tray is full. This is because there is a maximum dollar amount. You will reach the maximum dollar amount if your earnings from employment equal or exceed the year's maximum pensionable earnings, or YMPE. YMPE is meant to represent the average national wage in Canada. This continues for each year of your working life. If you fill all the compartments in your tray, you'll get the maximum from CPP when you start receiving your retirement pension. But we know most people don't fill each compartment in their tray every year of their working life. So how many years are required to get the maximum and how does that work? Since each compartment in the tray represents one year of your CPP working life, the ice cube tray for our example of someone starting CPP at age 65 will have 47 individual compartments. The calculation to determine whether or not you will get the maximum from CPP is done by looking at how full your personal ice cube tray is after making a few special adjustments. These special adjustments are known as dropouts. The adjustments let you drop out or remove some of the empty or least full compartments in your tray. If your personal ice cube tray wasn't full before the adjustments, it may be full after the dropouts are applied, and in this case, you might still get the maximum from CPP even if you had some years with low or even no earnings. Let's get a little more specific about the dropouts. CPP recognizes that the caregiver of children might have to earn less money than they normally would or may not be able to work at all because of their child raising responsibilities. The period of time where the child raising dropout might apply starts the month after birth and it ends on the month the child turns age seven. During this time, caregivers might be able to drop out some of the empty or least full compartments in their tray. There is an earnings threshold called the Year's Basic Exemption, or YBE. YBE is used to tell if these rules can be applied. If you are the primary caregiver and you earned $3,500 or less in any of the years between the child's year of birth and their seventh birthday, those years will be removed from your ice cube tray. Also, in a particular child raising year between birth and age seven, if you made more than the YBE, but you made less than your CPP lifetime average earnings, then you can drop out those particular years. If you were to tilt your personal ice cube tray back and forth, your lifetime average earnings would be represented when all the individual compartments in the tray have the same level. Now when you look at your ice cube tray, if the level in a compartment during a child raising year is less than the average level of all compartments in the tray, then you can also drop out those specific compartments. Even if you're not a primary caregiver, CPP recognizes that we all might have some low or no earning years. To deal with this, everyone is allowed to drop out 17% of their least full tray compartments. This is called the general dropout. For the individual in our example, who starts CPP at age 65 with 47 years in their CPP working life, the general dropout lets them remove eight compartments from their personal ice cube tray. 
The general dropout is applied after the child raising dropout. You can also drop out any years where you received a CPP disability benefit. Once the dropouts have been applied and all the components that can be removed are gone, then you will see if your ice cube tray is full. And if it is, you will get the maximum from CPP. Ideally, utilizing the dropouts allows your personal ice cube tray to be full and this is how you will get the maximum CPP retirement pension. Even if your tray isn't completely full, the effect of removing empty or the least full compartments will raise the overall average level in your tray, allowing you to get more from CPP compared to what you would get before the dropouts were applied. Whether you get the maximum retirement pension from CPP or not, it's important to remember that CPP has three features that make it particularly valuable as a source of retirement income. Your money from CPP is guaranteed, it lasts until you die, and CPP provides inflation protection. What else would you like to know about how CPP works? Please subscribe and tell us in the comments.